Somebody asked me to make a video about drawing orbitals and nodes. And <clears throat> it's really not something that is a big deal. In other words, there's really only a couple of simple things you need to be able to identify when it comes to being able to draw an orbital. And that's what the shape of the orbitals are based on their letter designation, S, P, D, F. And you have to be able to <clears throat> then convert that into a picture based on its L value. So L is 0, that's an S orbital. L is 1, that's a P orbital. L is 2, that's a D orbital. L is 3, that's an F orbital. That's all, that, all you have to do. If you match up the quantum numbers for the angular momentum quantum number to the shapes, then you've got the shape of the orbital. And in this class, you have to know the shape of an s orbital, the shape of a p orbital, and the shapes of d orbitals. It's real simple. The shape of an s orbital is a sphere. And I can't draw a sphere on the page because I can't draw in three dimensions, and neither can you. So as long as you know that it's a sphere, <clears throat> then you can describe that and use a circle to represent it. A p orbital is in the shape of what we call a dumbbell. That's a p orbital. There's three of them, and they all just line up on different axes. This would be the y axis. There's another one that lines up on the x axis. And there's another one that lines up on the z axis. Now, the question was asked about nodes. Remember, a node is just simply a place where there's no electron density. So in an s orbital, it's completely a spherical shape. There's no places where there's not an electron within the sphere. In the p orbital, though, you see right here at the axis, at the origin, there's a plane where there's no orbital density. That's a node. And that's what you need to know about a node. Now, for a d orbital, there's two different shapes. The first shape is what I call a clover leaf, but it's really just two of these dumbbells perpendicular to each other. That's all it really is. That's all that's going on there. And then there's four of these. There's four different versions of that shape lined up different ways along the axes. Then there's another orbital shape. I call it donut dumbbell. So it's got a little donut around it. A toroid is the word for it, and it's got the dumbbell coming out below like this. So both of these are d orbitals. So either one of these could be a shape that you could use to represent a d orbital. Now, seeing nodal planes in this shape is difficult uh, unless you've been able to visualize in three dimensions for a while. But seeing nodal planes in this shape is a lot easier. There's a spot where there's no electron density. There's a plane where there's no electron density. And so that's how you would represent the nodes right there.